Hello and welcome to our channel. If you think that cleaning a horse's bum is weird, wait till you hear about the job of ancient Egypt's Nehru fight. I was absolutely dumbstruck when I found out, and trust me, you will be as well. The ancient Egyptians are popular for their massive influence on modern medicine and architecture. But little is known about their dark, weird history. So prepare yourselves as we delve into today's episode title. You'll be wowed by outrageous practices and, frankly, ludicrous assumptions that the ancient Egyptians held in high esteem and would literally die for. Of course, this piece isn't to judge them or shame them. Far from it. But if we can sing their praises for their timeless achievements, what stops us from having a good laugh at their crazy practices, right? So let's jump in. Now, I don't like suspense, so I won't subject you to it either. I begin straight away with the filthy job of Nehru Fight, also known as the Bum Blower. Yes, you heard right, I said bum. Or, if you would prefer, anus. The Nehru Fight's job was to take care of the pharaoh's rear, ensuring that it was at its cleanest all the time. No traces of fecal matter was to be found around the royal bum. Or, oh, it'll be off with his head. Okay, that was an extreme exaggeration. No heads will actually roll. But you get the idea of the seriousness of Nehru Fight's job. His work wasn't only limited to cleaning the royal bottom, but also ensuring that it was free of all kinds of rectal diseases, including hemorrhoids. You'll be forgiven for thinking that such a task was the duty of a low-life slave or lower-class citizen. In reality, this job was preserved for special physicians who belonged to the order of the priesthood. The ancient Egyptians regarded their pharaohs as gods and forbade anyone to touch them without express permission. The royal bum cleaner was one of the privileged few who could touch the Egyptian god, and I can imagine he did his job with much glee. Who wouldn't? But here's where it gets much more interesting. Part of the job of the Nehru fight, also known as guardian of the anus, includes emptying the bowels of his divine majesty. You see, the pharaohs conducted themselves as deities, including eating like one, which sometimes led to constipation. Once the pharaoh realized he was constipated, he called in the royal guardian of the anal region to do what he did best. Upon arrival, our special guest would request our divine pharaoh to bend down on all fours. He then took a long cannula, filled it with a hot concoction of herbs and other potions, and blew it down the divine anus. But does it work? Absolutely! Indeed, several cultures across the globe use the same methodology to get rid of constipation and similar sicknesses even today. Modern science also endorses the efficacy of the practice by encouraging the use of enemas. So, even in their filthy operations, the ancient Egyptians found a way of influencing our world. However, if you think that cleaning the king's rear is filthy, hold your horses till you hear the next one. Oops. <laughs> I forgot. I promised you no suspense, but I couldn't help myself. Don't worry, it won't happen again. So, let's get right on with it. Today, we use several birth control methods, including pills and spermicides, to determine when we want to have children. The ancient Egyptians also had a similar concept of contraception, but their methodology was a slap in the face of modern science. According to some Egyptologists, the women in ancient Egypt believed that a mixture of honey and crocodile poo would prevent pregnancy. Now, before you crazy heads run off to risk your precious life looking for crocodile dung, you should know that this method doesn't work. You could end up in the labor ward pushing out a set of quadruplets if you try it. Oh, and need I add that they didn't drink the horrible mixture. Instead, they rubbed it around their genitals in hope that the concoction would act as a spermicide. Now, I understand that their limited knowledge allowed them to do some ridiculous things, but I find it horrifying the number of times they needed to smear crocodile poo. Though the ancient Egyptians used more effective spermicides like lime, I'm more intrigued by the crocodile poo story. Does that make me weird? Perhaps we should just move along. Just when I thought I had discovered the weirdest job and spermicide ever, nothing prepared me for what was coming next. Ancient Egyptians buried pharaohs with their slaves. You see, I kept my promise, no suspense, straight to the point. The ancient Egyptians believed in life after death as part of their many cultural developments. 
and they believed that their pharaohs would require slaves in the afterlife. Thus, when a pharaoh passed on to eternity, his slaves were sacrificed and buried alongside him to serve him in the afterlife. Though I find that filthy secret disturbing, what I found bizarre was the willingness of the slaves to be sacrificed. It was considered an honor to be thought worthy of serving your pharaoh in the afterlife. So the slaves underwent the sacrificial ceremony with pride in their hearts. But before you go screaming about human rights and all the modern day rights bestowed upon us, let me tell you about a few people who weren't exactly proud of their deaths. These people were known as the offenders of the sun god Ra. The sun god was the primary god of the ancient Egyptians and the king of the Egyptian pantheon. He was the creator of all things, the giver and sustainer of life. So revered was he that offending him attracted the worst punishment ever, burning to death. Now, I give you a bit of context. The ancient Egyptians believed that the physical body was home to the soul, thus preserving it was of the utmost importance. Dying without a physical body meant that the soul would wander forever and could even get lost, which was unthinkable in ancient Egypt. So, the next time you think about cussing out the sun for any reason at all, note that immolation awaits you. Though Egyptians were not quick to evoke the death penalty, which was embedded in their laws, they had very brutal ways of carrying them out. The thought of them alone makes my brain shrink. Some of the penalties we, as modern people, are accustomed to are hanging and beheading, like what happened during the French Revolution in the 18th century. But being fed to crocodiles for stealing a state property? That's ruthless. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Before being thrown to the crocodiles, the thief was made to return up to 180 times what they'd stolen and subjected to 100 lashes of the cane. A parent who murdered their child, whether accidental or otherwise, would have the child tied to them for three days until the body began to decompose. However, a child who murdered their parents was burnt alive. Are you beginning to shudder already? Just wait till you hear the fate of the grave robber. Ancient Egyptians treated the graves of their royals as sacred monuments, which is why a few of them are still intact today. Thus, they didn't take lightly to grave robbers. Thieves who stole items and ornaments from graves either received 100 lashes or had their hands chopped off. However, those who touched the mummy faced the death penalty, which ranged anywhere from decapitation to drowning. And as if that wasn't enough, these criminals faced eternal damnation if they failed the heart-weighing ceremony in the afterlife. Yes, a literal heart-weighing ceremony. According to ancient Egyptian religion and philosophy, a person's heart was weighed against the Mayat feather after they passed. If they led a good life, the heart would weigh lighter than the feather, and thus they'd pass into eternity. However, if the person's moral choices were poor, their heart would outweigh the feather condemning them to a second death. This time, the death was at the hands of the monster, Amit, the devourer of the dead. And oh, you should see Amit. But Amit and his business isn't nearly as terrifying as the timeless curse of the pharaohs that has endured until modern times. As I said earlier, the Egyptians treated their royal tombs as sacrifices and didn't treat with kid gloves any trespasser who robbed or touched their mummies. I can certainly relate to this, as I wouldn't want anyone touching my mummy either. To prevent and discourage the looting and desecration of royal tombs, the Egyptians held an elaborate burial ceremony, which included inscribing curses on the walls of the tombs. Now, you may think that these curses were just to scare thieves away. Actually, that's what a few Egyptologists like Lord Carnarvon thought when they discovered Tutankhamun's tomb, until they found out the hard way. And by the time they had learned their lesson, they were already gone, probably facing Amit for their transgressions. What a way to make an exit. However, a few skeptics think that Carnarvon's death and few others like Howard Carter were just coincidences and nothing to do with the curses. If you ask me, well, I'm not sure what to think. But I can tell you for certain, you won't ever catch me touching an ancient Egyptian royal tomb, not even with a 100-foot pole. What about you? Would you be willing to risk the consequences and breach a royal tomb just to satisfy your curiosity? Let me know in the comments section. Oh, and by the way, did you know that Cleopatra wasn't as pretty as most historians would have you believe? Click on this video to find out. Thanks ever so much for joining me on this history journey, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.